Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to take our DWF and our design review software a little bit further, but we're going to back up and start in Revit one more time just to reinforce how you go about doing your DWFs here in Revit. So down from the file menu, we're coming down to export and we're selecting the DWF, DWFX option, which brings up our export settings menu here. This time we are, we're going to create a new set and I'm just going to go ahead and name this. For example, we're going to send out a presentation set. And so you see that name appears up here in our export list. Show in the list. I want to export just the sheets in this set. And we're going to, there are no sheets currently in the set. So when we come down to all the sheets in the model, you'll see just the sheets listed. Kind of sorting it so that I don't have to deal with unchecking any of my views, just the sheets. And then you'll see I can just check the check all box here. And Revit will select all of my sheets. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. So now I'm going to change this to a DWFX so that it gives me just one file with all the sheets in it. And you can go ahead and save that wherever you would like. For your project, I'm going to save it to the desktop here. And you'll see down here in the status bar, you'll see that Revit is going through a process very similar to printing a PDF, but it's going ahead and exporting this DWF. So this should be done in another minute or two. It does not take much longer than actually creating a PDF. However, I believe the information that is exported is quite helpful. And you'll see the way that we use the markup tools. I think you'll appreciate the tool and begin to use the free Autodesk design review software. And I'm, I'll be using design review here in 2013. However, um, I'm using 2014 as well on some projects and they're really, the differences are extremely minimal. So this tutorial should help you no matter what version you're using design review. Okay. So now here's our menu. By default, it may bring you to the home tab, but as I said, in this tutorial, we're going to focus on our markup tools which there's also some measure tools. So, you know, I can actually take a look at getting the lens in certain things if I'm looking for a particular dimension, but we're going to focus on the markup tools here. Over here, you'll see our markup tools up by default. If I click on my list, you'll see all of my sheets here. I've got all of my sheets listed and they'll come up by thumbnail. So if I wanted to start right here in this partic particular presentation section sheet and start my modifications or wherever I wanted to start I could start there but I'm going to go back to this plan view here and I want to start marking up the drawing well let's come over here first we need to start you'll see in the formatting all of my markup tools are actually grayed out over here until you select what draw mode very similar to Revit um, as you're learning that you'll see that a lot more to the thinking. Uh, that's why I think as your as our thinking develops um, about Revit, it actually many of the Autodesk products, thankfully, they kind of operate on the similar logic. So I'm going to select freehand, which you'll see I use very regularly. I'm going to select freehand, and then you can select the line weight that you'd like to use. I'm going to give myself a nice thick red line here. And I'm going to say, for example, maybe this top note, we want to take a closer look at, or I need to make a comment based on that note. So I'm going to circle the note. And actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and zoom in. We can zoom in on what's going on here. And I'm going to select my text box. And then you'll see, I'll just go ahead over here and draw myself a text box. And you'll see the font is still 10 font. I might want to make that a little bit bigger. 
and I can just begin to type whatever note that I need to make here on West Elevation I'm going to assume that the note is not correct and then when I'm done with that note you'll see it'll be sitting right here and I can use I can use all of the tools that we typically have I can move this note into place wherever I wanted to move it and you'll see up here if I toggle on that green button I can rotate the note as well I'll also kind of point out you know some of my cloud tools so you'll see Revit gives me the flexibility to kind of use and create some of the clouds that were typically used for more of a supplemental drawing or however you want to annotate um, that was my rectangular one you'll see here Revit so I would encourage you to play around with these tools because you'll see that you can do quite a bit of uh, customizing to get the type of cloud that you're looking for or to use more just free form um, this is more of a highlighter tool so I can highlight over some things and you know I'll highlight for example and I you see I can highlight over and still read the text that's using highlighter versus the freehand and we still have control over in the, in the width of that tool as well and then down here on the stamps, we actually can Revit, I'm sorry, Autodesk Design Review also comes with many of these stamps that I can just apply to my drawings as well. So you'll see I can just drop in a not for construction tag and move this up at the top or I'll zoom out a little bit and, and we'll move this down on the bottom where we would where we might see this on this drawing just so that we know what this set is is about um, and I wanted to point out over here on the markups menu Revit's actually keeping track so I can actually begin to I can lock the position of these markups in place so that we don't delete them you can address whether or not they've whether or not each one of these comments have even been addressed or not so far I can still right click on them and I can delete if I bring up my menu down here just so we, where you can I want you to be able to see what's going on let me click back on my markups but not for construction you'll actually see the name created what time it was created it becomes very helpful uh, whether it's for review question and when the comment when I mark that this comment has been addressed or done you'll see that that check mark actually turned from none which is what it was by default when I changed it to done it'll give you a green check mark I can click on any one of these comments if I'm still in edit mode right click and I can maybe I'll delete that freehand sketch that we had at first and we're going to use more of the cloud style to point out the areas that need to be addressed in our plans so I just think very quickly there's so much um, that you can do without even having to pay for a markup version of software uh, just by downloading the Autodesk design review software and using it to your advantage um, it allows you to very quickly I can very quickly kind of go through each one of my sets and you'll see I, I still have my sheet here and I can Go ahead once again and mark up just go through the entire set mark up each one of these sheets and I can save it and I think some of the power in my opinion is that it tracks these changes and I can begin to see exactly what's happened when the changes were made and I can continue to reference these DWFs uh, at each phase of our project which can be very helpful for your project documentation. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Shed a little bit more light on the markup and measure tools here in Autodesk Design Review. And once again, I hope you'll subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching.